And it saddens me because I see so many times, as long as things are good in my life, I'm, I'm moving from that. But I'm saying, rather than building my house, see, you can, if you're going to wait till the storm comes, okay, bring in a construction crew. It's not going to work real good. We build the house of our understanding when things are good. Then when the storm comes, guess what stands? Our house. Man, that's good news. Oh, I'll tell you, people need this. People need this. Because we've, pre we've preached the position side of grace that we haven't talked about receiving grace and receiving the grace that we already have and we haven't understood our part in it. Amen? So knowledge, self-control. I'm going to try to quick finish this. Perseverance, endurance. The Bible says whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience, endurance, and comfort from the Scriptures might have hope, Romans 15, verse 4. Do you remember, you remember Joseph in Genesis? The Bible says in Psalm 105, verse 19, that until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Does that mean God was trying him? Are you with me yet? <laughs> no, but you have a promise and everything comes against that promise and it doesn't look like the promise is ever going to manifest. That's why you've got to add patience. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because if you don't add patience, you'll... We through faith and patience, Hebrews 6, 12, we inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Oh. <laughs> we could go on and on about that. Perseverance, endurance. I'm trying to hurry. And godliness, which means being well devoted to God. There's seven pillars here. I'm going to hit them quick because I'm going to finish this. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Once again, you add these things, you'll never fall. You'll never fail to receive. I don't have time to go on all that. And, and the brotherly kindness, love, charity, God's kind of love, which is powerful. The Bible says faith works by love. A revelation of God's love for me, which manifests in, in a revelation of my love for God and my love for my brethren. Okay, just keep moving right along. I'm, I know I'm not doing it justice, but I wanted to get the point out. For if, you, if these things are, in you, are yours and they abound... You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know you can have the knowledge of Jesus and be barren in that knowledge? Right. You know what that means? That means there's never any result of what I know. See, I know a lot more than I actually manifest in my life. We all do. We're all that way. But, you know, the more we focus and put on there and the more we act upon what God shows us to act upon, guess what? Once again, what you hear, you can't forget. What you see, you might remember. And what you do, you understand. Amen? You know, I, I'm going to tell them myself, so if there's any police officers here or anything, please don't arrest me. But I drove a lot before I ever got my license. And I know there's several others in here that did the same. I'm not going to point you out. <laughs> but you know, that was a great advantage. Amen? To get in a car, whoa, I never drove before. And you know, somebody's behind you doing about two mile an hour. You know, it's like... Student driver. <laughs> Amen? But that helped. So if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be bare nor unfruitful for the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Therefore, brethren, uh, uh, be even the more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble, never fall. Next verse. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep that up there. Now let me say one quick thing here. I'm, I'm trying so hard to wrap this up, and it's hard. Um, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29, we're receiving a kingdom. Now, do we have the kingdom? Absolutely. The kingdom. And let me say this about the kingdom. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? We got one for two. Two people are ready. Anybody else? <laughs> you know, when Jesus taught the, what we call the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 and Luke chapter 11, you know, one of the things he said was, Pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Did you know that? You remember that? But you know what the kingdom looks like for you and I as New Covenant believers? Oh, somebody hear this. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy, and it's in the Holy Ghost. If you take that verse, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, just leave the middle part out. The kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. When they were asking for the kingdom to come, they were asking for the Holy Ghost. Anybody hearing that? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I could do my baseball thing, but I won't. Right. So, so, so the, an entrance, if you add those seven things, shall be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Next verse. Just about done. I mean, we really are. For this reason, 
I will not be negligent or I will not neglect to remind you always of these things. I got to remind you always of these things. I got to remind you always of these things. Why? Though you know and are established in the present truth. I got to constantly remind you even though you know. Amen. Yeah, that's why I tell people all the time. One of the greatest things we got going for us, my wife and I, is we are understanding more and more the value of constantly soaking in the Word. I'm telling you, this Bible study, that there's one on Tuesday, and there's one they're having every day. It is phenomenal. You, begin, you start understanding things. You start understanding that God will never violate His Word. And all of a sudden, it starts impacting your life. Now you know He'll never violate His Word to you because He can't because it's of covenant. You know, I was listening to somebody recently and they were talking about, well, God wanted to do this and God wanted to do that, which was true, good things. But, but I thought as he was talking, I was thinking, yeah, but it's the reason he did those things was because of covenant. See, when you understand covenant and that God will never violate his covenant, it'll change your life. I know I'm going long, I'm sorry. Not that long. Okay, next verse, one more verse. Yes, I think it is right as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by reminding you. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 says, you stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. The greater part of learning is being reminded of things you already know. The more you see, the more you know, the more that's added. I mean, I go to verses, and like, like even doing the James 1, through 25, I could have camped on there, and I was there last week. There were so many things that I saw just this week, just this week that he was showing me. And he says, man, you add these things, Chris. Add these things. You know, all storms come with one goal, and that's to make you quit. Even if you still go through the motions, quitting is an attitude of the heart. Are you hearing me? See, that's why it's a fight. Back to our original verse, and we are closing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Let's look at it, please. 1 Timothy 6, 12. I want you to see it. I'm trying to get you to see more of these. Sometimes I blow them out there and I want, to, I want you to see them. Even if we don't cover near what I think we should cover. God knows what he's doing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Look at this. Boy, I'd love to do all these. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. Fight it. It's imperative. Lay hold. Lay hold on eternal life. Seize upon. Grab eternal life. What is eternal life? That they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. You've got to seize upon it. Fight it. We're not fighting the devil. The devil's defeated. We're fighting wrong mindsets. Okay? To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Are you a fighter? Amen. Are you a doer? Now I want to pray before we, we leave and I want to say, Father, in the name in the name. What name? The name that every knee must bow to. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you give us creative ways and, uh, uh, to, to act upon the word that we hear. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I, I do, I, I know it's, it's, it's way before 12. There's, there's a big blizzard out there, but I, I, I want to read this to you. Is that okay? Can we just go a couple minutes longer? Because this needs to be on the CD and you need to hear it. Because this will give you another tangible to help you. And I apply this to myself. Everything I preach to you goes right to me. One finger at you and how many? One, two, three. And the thumb back at me. So four. <laughs> Watch this. This is Andrew Womack's thing. We shared it Thursday night, but I want it on the CD and I want you to hear this. He says, what, he's telling me, I'm going to give two examples. I'll try to go fast so, so it'll be on the CD. Let me say this to you. First of all, believing, uh, thinking you believe and actually believing can be two different things. Believing is acting upon the faith that you possess. Those are things the Lord gave me. Now I want to give you two examples. When Jamie and I first started out in ministry, we were really struggling financially. Occasionally I'd work odd jobs to help make ends meet. One day I came home from a painting job feeling so sick I could hardly stand up. I just wanted to lie down on the couch and rest. Jamie was in the kitchen fixing my lunch. When she saw me on the couch, she said, she asked, what are you doing? I feel sick. I don't know if I can eat anything. But we... <laughs> this is amazing. But we had already been teaching other believers these same truths. You have to use your body to quit yielding to the devil. 
Don't cooperate with him. Do the very things that you don't feel like doing. Resist the devil and fight against him with your physical actions. James 4, 7. I got wow written behind that. Jamie came right over and got me off the couch. She put her arm around my shoulder and started dragging me around the house saying, we need this money. You will go back to, to the, that job. You're healed. She made me get up and start acting healed. She just forced me to practice what I'd been preaching. Praise God. In 10 minutes, I was over it and felt well again. I went back to work and got paid that day. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I got another one I want to read to you. And hear me. This, don't do this if this isn't reality in your heart, but I'm saying do something. Do something. See, that sounds crazy to most of us. It's crazy that we don't go that way. We're the ones that crazy. They're sane. Amen. I've been waiting to drag Jen around the house for a long time. <laughs> I had to read it so she wouldn't forget. <laughs> we have this thing where... When uh, we was watching, he preaching on self-centeredness. Andrew's preaching on self-centeredness, the source of all grief. And I'll look at my wife when doing it. I go, is it too much conviction, honey? <laughs> we can turn it off. <laughs> this, see, this is a challenging us. This is responding to grace. One more. Are you ready for one more? Does this bless you? It blesses me. This stuff blesses me. It doesn't condemn me. Yeah. Yeah. There was an old rock band called Twisted Sister that used to sing a song called, We're not gonna take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. It aggravates me. You know, hey, there's no condemnation, but I'm still believing that nobody in this church gets sick. Amen. And the other several weeks back, Jen was home with Gracie. But so what? We're not stopped fighting. That doesn't mean anything. God's still a healer because the word says it. God wants you well. And we're going to preach more and more on this because you're going to understand God wants you well just like he doesn't want you to sin. He doesn't want you sick. And he doesn't want you dying, going out all decrepit and beat up. He wants you going out with a shout. Amen. Hallelujah. One more. This one will really, I, I know. Watch this. Act on the word. That night, the, the, the night before I was ordained into the ministry, I hurt my back opening our broken garage door. We were living in Siegelville, Texas at the time. As I bent over and started lifting the garage door up, it got caught and something just popped in my back. The pain that immediately shot through my body was so excruciating it knocked me to the ground. My one-year-old son had been watching me. I told him, go tell mommy, but he, he just sat there jabbering at me. Eventually, he wandered into the house and brought Jamie out. When she saw me lying there, I hurt so bad that, I, that all I could do was whisper. I hurt my back. Well, then get up, Jamie pulled me. Uh, man, she ain't very compassionate. <laughs> well, then get up, Jamie pulled me up prayed over me and said, now you act on the word of God. Now you act on the word of God. Oh, this blesses me. Again, we needed, we needed me to go back, be able to work, so she uh, cut me no slack. It was a long, long story, but I started doing things with my physical body. My shoulder blades were back so far, they were touching each other. The pain was excruciating, but I forced myself to do things I didn't feel like doing. Finally, over a day's period of time, I, I got to where I could do sit-ups and other things. Although my movement had returned, my shoulders were still pulled back. I went back, I went to bed that night, and when I woke up in the morning, my shoulders were still pulled back. I just kept fighting it all day long. Right before I went to my ordination service, I declared, I am going to act healed. I am going there, and I will be ordained. By the time I arrived at church, I was healed. Anybody hear that? Yeah. My actions played a major part in receiving and manifesting that healing. You can't lie in bed acting sick and at the same time release the supernatural power of God. That one's in the lake. That one's in the lake. That one's in the lake, baby. Look at this. Say it again. You can't lie in bed acting sick and at the same time release the supernatural power of God. You must learn how to use your physical body to resist the devil and cooperate, cooperate with the Lord. If you don't step out in faith and act on the word, you limit God. You know you can limit God. Psalm 78, 41. They limited the Holy One of Israel under the old covenant. How much more you and I under the new? Amen. Amen. I can't wait when she lays down to drag her around the house. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. But see, this is powerful. We got to act on the word, man. It's so simple, but yet so profound. We all think we believe this, but very few do. Thinking you believe and believing the word are two completely opposite different things. Mental assent or mental assenting to the word is not faith. You have faith. Believing is acting upon your faith. 
See, your faith can lie dormant. That's why he said, add these things to your faith. He didn't say, add these things so you'll have faith. He said, add them to what you already have. Act on the word. Man, that's good news. That's really good news. That is good news. And see, I, I thought, you know, these examples, oh, they're extreme. God, we're not of this world, people. We're not of this world. And we've got to challenge ourselves to come up to all that God says we are in Christ. The Holy Spirit will empower us to do that. And it comes by simply acting on what we believe. You know, we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, I haven't been able to get it. I don't care if you go, blah, 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 blah. Do it. God will use it. It'll be like a dam and it'll just break. Just act on it. Are you hearing me? Just act on it. Well, okay, if he wants me to speak, I'll speak. We got this view that these big celestial hands will come out of the heavens. Like, <laughs> they're not, it's not going to happen that way. You talk. He'll give you the words. And I don't care if you get a hum, hum, hum. There's all kinds of languages in the world. Trust that God is using it. It's called faith. Faith is acting on what you believe. Faith, or excuse me, believing is acting on the faith you already have. Believing is a simple action. Amen. Amen. Anybody here need prayer for anything? Anybody not born again? You must be born again. Asking the Lord into your heart. I have a strong desire to lay hands on somebody. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. What do you need? What do we... Okay, where Ron hit you? No. Right. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a... In the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of Jesus Christ in this body. I rebuke this pain in this side, and I command it by the authority of the name of Jesus to go. Everyone said amen. amen. Anybody else? It doesn't have to be me. You've all got the same power that raised Christ from the dead. If you're born again, it's in you. Amen. You know you can lay hands on yourself. Do you know if, if you never practice these things, then you can't, you got to do it. Oh, God, I'm telling you what. Last week and this week you need these CDs so bad. I do too. If I could just get past my voice. <laughs> my brother Steve said he was talking to somebody about... Uh, playing at, a, at his place, you know, a band about playing, and they said on the phone, somebody who knew me from years ago, and said, I mean, you, that I, him and I sounded just like, and he goes, he goes, you want to play here or what? <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> Anybody? We're going to dismiss. Look at that. Before noon, you should be out before the blizzard. If anybody's stuck in a drift, well, can you believe the weather yesterday and today? I mean, it's amazing. It was short weather. I think how confused the bees must be. You know, they're flying, trying to find pollen. All of a sudden, oh, back to the winter cluster. <laughs> Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Declare, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, Abraham being a doer of the word of God was that he staggered not at the promise through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. He gave glory to God. You know, declaring is, is part of being a doer of the word of God. Amen. Whatever he shows you. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. that uh, Teresa gave me, Teresa Lika. Didn't she do a great job today? Yeah. Did she sound great? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So good. But um, it says, what's the difference between a northern fairy tale and a southern fa fairy tale? Does anybody know? It says, a northern fa fairy tale begins with once upon a time. A southern fairy tale begins with, y'all ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Now you know. Huh? I'll put this thing in my pocket. Uh, another one that I heard that I thought was kind of funny, and I shared it Thursday. I even shared it last week's Bible study. That really blessed me. It, uh, since it's the, quote, Lent season or whatever, and uh, uh, <laughs> Mark's already laughing. I heard it. It said, and, and, it, go, and it goes like this. There was this, uh, there's this all-Catholic neighborhood in uh, uh, they were, during Lent season on Friday, all of a sudden the whole neighborhood smelled somebody grilling steak on their grill. And they thought, we can't have that. So the priest went down there to talk to the individual. And he said, and he, he said well, you know, you're a Baptist, but you need, to, you need to be a Catholic. So he says, all right. And so he has the whole ceremony. He says, you know, you was born a Baptist, you was raised a Baptist, but now you're a Catholic. So problem solved. Well, the next year during Lent, same time, once again, steak 
aroma filled the neighborhood. They went back to see the man standing before his grill and says, you was born a fish, you was raised a fish, or you was born a cow, you was raised a cow, but now you're a fish. <laughs> I messed the joke up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought it was cute. So anyhow, praise God, this is exciting. We're going to kind of continue a theme I started last week. I'm telling you guys, hear me. This is so important that you and I grab this. Amen? So important. Do you know we're in a fight? Not with the devil. The devil's already defeated. But we're in a fight. You know what we're in a fight with? Our belief system. The strongholds in our thinking. Amen? I'll say it again. We're in a fight. In fact, go to, and I, and I wrote, I, I Greek some of this, if you would, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. The good news is it's a good fight. You know why? Because Jesus has already won the victory. Amen. But you know, we have to receive and appropriate and operate in that victory. No amens. <laughs> See, there's this mindset that because God has done everything, which he has, that well, then it's automatically going to happen on my behalf. We talked last week, and I'm going to review this, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to set it up, the importance of being a doer of the Word of God. You're, the Lord showed me, He said, you're a doer of something. You're either doing the Word of God or doing the flesh, one or the other. Amen? So it's important. We're going to talk about that again, and then I'm going to, I'm going to catapult this, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to share something. Man, this is, this is powerful. This is really powerful. Anyhow, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Michael, you're awesome. Isn't he good? He guy does everything. <laughs> All right. It says, fight. Everybody say fight. fight. Fight the good fight of faith. So there's a fight. Notice it's the of fight the good fight of faith. It's not the fight against the devil. Let me say that again. Jesus has completely whipped the devil. But the fight is with our wrong mindsets. Number one, about the devil. <laughs> Number one, our religious mindsets, mm -hmm. our misunderstandings of grace, our not understanding the balance of grace in faith. Right. That faith is your positive response to what God has already provided by grace. God's provided everything, but you have to respond. Thursday night, the Lord gave me a powerful example. Who's ever played cards in here? All right. Amen. Some people think Amen. it's a sin. That's all right. You'll still go. <laughs> it's not. We respect those foolish convictions. I mean, those convictions. <laughs> it's just a game, okay? All right? But, but the Lord, Lord showed me something so powerful, even as we were teaching. He said, if you're playing in a game of cards, and, and, and say euchre, bid euchre, and, and, and the best hand you can have is a lone shooter, it's a perfect hand. It's a perfect hand, right? right. Amen. And you got those cards there, and they come around, and they ask you, well, what do you bid? Now, if you pass, guess what? That hand does you no good. Well, if God wants me to win this hand, he'll just make it happen. He's you've been provided with a good hand. You've been dealt a good hand. Play it. That <laughs> helped me so much. God's dealt you a lone shooter, man. You don't need anybody else. You've got himself. You've got the Holy Ghost. Play the hand. That's what being a doer of the word is. You've got to play the hand he's dealt you. But some people, oh no, if God wants this to happen, it'll just happen. It's a fight, people. There are so many voices. 1 Corinthians 14, 10 says there's many voices in the world. And there's so many voices that are hollering at you and I and telling us, oh, it ain't got it didn't happen. It didn't. Just like with the area of healing. It's a fight to believe that God's a healer. Why? Because God hasn't provided it? No, because all these things come at you. Remember so-and-so prayed for them and they died. It doesn't matter, the word says. You've got to prioritize the word over experience. See, that's what I said last week. So many of us are allowing our experiences to define the word of God rather than allowing the word of God to define our experiences. We got it backwards. The word says it. The word says I've got joy. Whether I feel it or not, the word says I've got it. Well, how does that happen? You've got to play the hand. You've got to act on the word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. It's powerful. Fight. Everybody say fight. fight. Hallelujah. The good fight of faith. Now this is amazing. I wrote down some of the definitions of this. This Greek word, egonzomai, it's in the present tense. That means it's continual fight. It's an ongoing fight. It's in the middle voice. That means you're getting some help. <laughs> 
And it's in the imperative mode, which means, or mood, I always say mode. My wife laughs at me because I was telling them about the, these, uh, these uh, app, uh, like apple cider drinks that you can make and stuff that they have at the Bible study. And I always call them moats. They're actually moths. So I, now that I know it gets on her nerves, I do it more. <laughs> Anyhow. So it's in the imperative mood, which means it's necessary that you fight, that you're not passive, that you're not passive, that you're not passive. Amen? Amen? See, this is grace, people. This is receiving the grace. See, that's why I say it's so necessary, hear me, that we receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because grace does not make sense to the natural mind. Did you know that? Grace makes no sense to the natural mind. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal the grace of God. It does. It takes His ministry to reveal to you the grace of God. The Bible says, for, for as the body without the Spirit is dead, even so uh, faith without grace is dead, or uh, uh, faith without works is dead also. In James chapter 2, verse 26, I saw a new angle on that this week. I never saw it before. The body without the Spirit is dead. Now, I always thought that just meant that when you die and your spirit leaves your body, that's true. Your body's dead, right? Your spirit is left. But there's another application of that. That the body of Christ without the ministry of the Holy Spirit is dead. It's dead. That's the church of Sardis in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. You have a name that you live, but you're dead. And he says, remember, remember what? How you've received. That's the fight of faith. That's the fight of faith. Remember how you have received. Remember that. Because if you don't, you'll forget. See, if you stop focusing on what Jesus has done and the grace of God and the promises of God, you begin to forget His benefits. Guess what? Works is right back at the door. Come and come back in. That's, see, that's a fight. Well, the church needs to learn to fight the good fight of faith. Now watch this. Fight. And I'm going to give you some of the definitions here. This word for fight, it means to struggle. I'm going to say struggle. It means to struggle. It means to uh, uh, literally uh, for a prize. It means to contend with adversaries to fight. To contend with adversaries. You know there's adversaries of faith? I was talking to my friend from Karis Bible College yesterday on the phone. And we were talking and we were talking about how, like, I don't know what town you live in. But in our town, uh, you know what the fight is? Every church is trying to outdo the other church with their Easter egg hunt. All right, sure. Am I against Easter egg hunts? I'm not against Easter egg hunts. But when it's all about Easter egg hunts and not the Word of God, something's wrong. Yeah. And, and Marcus was telling me, we were talking, and he said, he said, there's people who believe you can't build a church just on the Word of God. That's so true. I don't believe that. When I see the people that stay for a Bible study after church, and it's an awesome Bible study, the Bible in light of our redemption, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. See, where you, where you, what you treasure, your heart will go there. Amen. That's, that's what's going to... See, when King's Island has come and gone, you know what's going to last? The Word of God. You know what's going to... See, I'm convinced the reason that, that we have parents that grow up the, the way, because when as kids, we start them and we, and we make it about everything but the Word of God, rather than making it about the Word of God. So then when they get older, they think it's still, they're just adult babies. <laughs> the Word of God's what changes my life and your life. Hallelujah. That sounds so simple. I know everybody's, oh yeah, we, you know, a few scriptures in here, but it, we need to be breaking the Word. Hallelujah. This is life changing. Praise God. Well, it says, fight the good fight of faith. So you really, you contend with adversaries. I think about in the Old Testament, when they, God gave them the promised land. Everybody say gave. gave. They had to fight to take it, though. Read it, Numbers 13. And then in Numbers 33, verse 55, he says, if you won't and drive, out, drive out the inhabitants of the land, then it'll, it'll come to pass that those what, that you let remain will be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side. Now, how does that apply to you and I? We have this body, but there's many things that come against us emotionally and physically that seem to contradict what God says in the Word of God. You need to fight. We're going to talk about it today. This is exciting stuff. So lay hold on eternal life. This is amazing. Lay hold on eternal life. And the word, the word fight also means, I've got to say this before I move on, it means to struggle with dangers, annoyances, obstacles, standing in the way of faith, Holiness and a desire to spread the gospel. Now, now this is amazing here. Lay hold. Everybody say lay hold. Lay hold. 
this is in the aorist middle imperative mood. This word epilabato means to take possession of, to overtake, to, atta uh, to attain. Now, the word eternal life, eternal life is not just talking about when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life is talking about what my wife mentioned out of John chapter 10, verse 10, the abundant life, the fullness of what God says we have and who we are. Are you hearing this? It's a struggle, people, not with the devil, but with the lies that come from him, but with the lies of our own thinking, with the religious mindsets, with these strongholds in our thinking. That's the fight. That's why I say you got to hear and hear and hear and hear. And all of a sudden it becomes a part of you. And then once you hear, you act on what you hear. That's what we're after today. You act upon what you hear. And I'm going to give you some examples. Okay? And God will show you how to act. It can be different in any situation. It may just be saying and declaring and offering the praises of God. It may be doing something. I don't know. Every situation is different. But you have the Holy Spirit. And He'll show you. He'll guide you into the truth of that promise for you. Hallelujah. Now, with that said, I want you to jump over to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. And as you're going there, Michael, I'm Galatians 5, 4 from the old King James is where I'm going to next. For sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, if not, I'll quote it. All right. Uh, no, that's 1 Peter. Can I have 2 Peter? I'm sorry, I said 1 Peter. My bad. That's all right, though. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. This is so good. Watch this. Therefore, brethren, are you a brethren? Are you a brethren? Are you in the body? So is he talking to the world? Is he talking to me? He's talking to me. Say he's talking to me. Be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Can I have the old King James for this one? That's good though too, stumble. But I love the old King James here. Because the old King James says you will never fall. I want you to see that because this is good. You, watch this. You shall never fall. You shall never fall. You shall never fall. You shall never fall. Well, there you go. Now, now, now stop. Let me just, let's think this through. If you do, now, oh, that's legalism. That's not legalism. It's not legalism. The flip side of if you do is if you don't, what will happen? You shall fall. Now, what is fall? Does that mean you die and go to hell? No. He's talking to brethren. If you're born again, you're not going to get unborn again. Call it what you will. It's the truth. I call it the truth, okay? It said, so if you do these things, make your calling, your election, make it sure, make it steadfast. For if you do these things, you'll never fall. In fact, I've entitled this message, How to Never Fall. You know what it means to fall? Galatians 5, 4 from the Old King James. Watch this. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4 from the Old King James. Watch this. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Now, once again, he's talking to believers. He's talking to believers. He's not talking to unbelievers. I don't know about you, but I don't want Christ to be of no effect to me as a believer. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, or literally law in Greek, no definite article, if you're justified by your own works, by your own merits, you think that, well, I'm meriting this. Now watch this. You are fallen from grace. Fallen from grace is not running off with your secretary. <laughs> that's a result of somebody who's not in grace. But that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about you have fallen from trust. This is what it means. If you do these things, you'll never fall from grace. If you don't do these things, you will. What is it? You're going to add some things to your faith. Oh, that's works. No, I didn't say it. The Holy Spirit said it through the Apostle Peter. He says seven things. If you add these seven things to your faith, you'll never fall from grace. What does that mean? What does it mean to fall from grace? Christ becoming of no effect to you. You believe God for healing and you die. <laughs> you go to heaven if you're born again. That's awesome and you win. You believe God for something you're trusting, but for whatever reason, it doesn't manifest. I'm, say, I'm talking about stuff that's in God's will, obviously. That's what it means. That's what it means to fall. You don't appropriate what grace has provided. 
How many Christians don't appropriate what grace has provided? How many Christians don't walk in everything that none of us do perfectly? I'm not saying it like that, but I'm saying if you'll add these seven things to your faith, you'll never fall. If you'll be a do, you'll never fail to receive all that Christ has provided for you. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. Woo! That's it. Bingo! Let me, let me go back and let me, let me do some, a little review here. James chapter 1, verse 22. James 1, 22. It doesn't matter. Old, New King James is fine. Old King James, whatever. Watch this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, we talked about this last week. Why are you going over it again? Because we need it. 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 I thought there was a song called that. No, I'm kidding. So we need it. He says, don't just hear it, but do it. And doing it is not adding all your religious disciplines or calisthenics or whatever you want to call it to the Word of God. It's not legalism. It's acting upon what you see and hear in the Word. I, in fact, I wrote down some definitions, uh, more definitions of what it means to be a doer of the Word of God. A, believe, a doer of the Word is a believer who responds to who they are in the Spirit. All right, all right. Spirit, soul, and body. A doer of the Word of God is someone who responds to what they are who they are in the Spirit. For example, the Bible says, I have joy. I use this example a lot. But just recently, the, the, uh, uh, the Bible uh, says, I have joy. Just recently, I saw another example how if I have joy, I act upon the joy. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another example. Philippians chapter 2. Let me show you this one. Verse 3. This isn't joy, but this is uh, something that the Lord told me I am in the Spirit. Philippians 2, 3 says, let each esteem others better than themselves. Everybody say better. Okay, now I see that in the Word. What do I do with that? Do I esteem that my, someone less than me, the same as me, or better than me? Watch this. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Well, what does that look like? Next verse. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things which are of others. The next verse says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. Let it be in you. So here's my point. When I see it in the Word, whether it's joy, whether it's esteeming others better than myself, guess what I do? I have a choice. Do I act upon that Word? Or do I say, no, no, that's legalism. I don't want to act. See, once again, back to the card. I've been dealt a perfect hand. Do I play the hand or do I pass? Do I play the hand or do I say, well, if God wants me to esteem others better than themselves or if God wants me to do this, it'll just happen. I play the hand. Amen. I'm excited. Back up to James 1.22. Look at this. Be doers of the word in God and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We're going to go through this quick because I was in it last week and, and I've got a lot of places to go. Next verse. So, so I can be a hearer and, 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 and not a doer. And the Bible says if I hear and don't act upon what I hear, I deceive myself. Remember that? We talked last week how be careful that the light that is in you is not darkness. Right. Amen. Okay, now hang on. So, and then he says, but if you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're like unto somebody beholding your natural face in a mirror or a glass. Next verse. For you behold yourself, you go your way, you straightway or immediately forget what kind of person you were. Now you looked in the mirror. The word of God is the mirror. When I look in the mirror and I see who I am, if I go away and I don't put into practice what I see I am in the word, I forget who I am. And if you don't know who you are, somebody else will tell you. Whether your own mind, somebody, preacher on TV, or somebody will come up to you and say, this is who you are. I've told this story before about the guy that went to work and they did an experiment. And everybody kept, he was feeling fine. They walked up and said, you okay? No, but later somebody, you sure you're feeling all right? I think so. And after a while, the guy went home sick. Why? Because he started believing what everybody else told him. This is why the Word of God has to be an anchor in your belief system. God said it. And this is why it's so important to not just look in there and see it, but act upon it. I said, I told, I said, I've been believing God for every day the opportunity to lay hands on somebody. Every day. And I thought, it was Friday, I think it was, and we had to run to the store, and I thought, well, I haven't ran into anybody to pray for today. Wouldn't you know it, in the store. The guy started talking about it. I knew this guy. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And he, I said, can I pray for you? So you know what I got? I got to act on the word. I got to practice the word. I can't say I believe something and never act on it. I believe I love my wife, but I never treat her right. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? 
So he beholds himself, he goes his way, he immediately forgets what manner of man he was. This is why, even as you hear this message today, I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, direct each individual here, myself included, how to act on this word. How to act on this word. How to act on this word. Hallelujah. Now watch this. That one more verse. Watch this. For whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues there. And I used to say, continues looking therein, which is true. Nothing wrong with that. But he continues acting upon what he sees he is in the word of God. If he continues acting upon what he sees he is in the word of God, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, that man is blessed in his deeds. The flip side is, is if I just hear and never act on the word, I won't be blessed in my deeds. Christ will be of no effect to me. Now watch this. I wrote this. Uh, watch this. What you hear, say what you hear, what you, hear. you can forget. <laughs> what you see, you might remember. What you do, you understand. You got that? That's so good. What you see, you can forget. What you, or excuse me, what you hear, you can forget. What you see, you might remember. But what you do, you understand. What you do, you understand. You know, that's why when with your kids and stuff, sometimes you just got to let them do stuff. Mistakes and all. And guess what? We all make mistakes. I know that's a heavy revy, but, but my word, I, you know, people talk about oh, Peter, he sank. But you know, he got out of the boat. I didn't see any of them other guys getting out of the boat. There's no, oh, ah, Peter sank. Look at him, he sank. We don't know that, but. <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. So let's go. Let me, let me. Let me show you another one. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. It doesn't matter what translate King James or New King James. It does not matter. Now, I, now, let me say something here. This is before the cross. We know that. This is before the new birth. But it still applies to you and I. Okay? And I, and I do think that what Jesus, he's saying, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Okay? And, and, and we're under a new covenant. We are empowered to do the words of the Lord. Okay? We are righteous. Did you know that? We are righteous. We're not, we don't do anything to be righteous. But we do do things out of our righteousness. See, when you do things... You know what the Bible says? The fine linen is the righteousness of the saints in Revelation 19.8. Look at it. It's actually the righteous acts of the saints. Look at the New King James or, or go to the Greek. Isn't that amazing? See, there is a response. If I believe, faith takes what grace has already supplied. And, and grace has supplied everything, but my faith is the hand that takes what his grace has already supplied. Now watch this. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Next verse. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Now watch. Keep going. Thanks. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock when and when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently or violently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. Next verse. Another verse there. Okay. But he that heareth and do it doeth not. Now stop for a minute. Both people heard, right? We have two hearers. There's only one difference. One of them acted upon what he heard and the other one did not act upon what he heard. Hear the difference? That's it. That's it. One of them acted upon what he heard. The other one did not act upon what he heard. That's the only difference. This man, he's like, without a foundation, built a house upon the earth and against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Do you know that I heard a statistic recently that 90% of the people that get healed in big healing crusades that you see, 90% lose their healing. That bothers me. Does it bother you? That ought not to be. Amen. We need to be actors. Not, we need to respond and act upon the Word of God. We need to be doers of the Word of God. Now, what does that look like? That's a great question. What does it look like to be a doer of the Word of God? Jump over to 2 Peter chapter 1. And, if, and I'll take this from the New King James if that's possible. Second, do you know that Jesus, when he would pray for people, he would say stuff like, stretch forth your hands? Do you know that in Mark chapter 2, when the four guys broke up the roof 
and they lowered the guy down on the stretcher. Do you know that the Bible says Jesus saw their faith? Hallelujah. I'm going to read something here that I think is going to shake you up. I shared it Thursday night. It shook me up. But it's, I, see, God is saying, come up hither. God wants us to receive everything that Jesus has provided. Nobody's perfect. Nobody does any of this perfect. I don't mean it like that. But God has provided everything. And the more we will act upon what we know, the more he's able to give us. The more manifestations able to operate. But if every time something comes along, I immediately act like the world. That's what it means to, to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I do things the world's way instead of God's way. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. This challenges me. There's nothing wrong with, you know, for example, medicine. Nothing wrong with that. But I, would, I want it to be where my first response is, what does God say? God says, by his stripes I'm healed. I want to operate that way. And hopefully, if I take medicine until I, I get to where I'm walking in that, so be it. We're, I'm for doctors. I think doctors are great. We're after the same goal, seeing people well. People say stuff, oh, Jesus healed people as a sign. I don't believe that. I don't. I believe Jesus healed people because he had compassion on people's sufferings. If Jesus wanted a sign, he could have called light. He could have called 12 legions of angels. Jesus could have really done it up. Check this firework show off. Show out. See, I was thinking of Joel. I was watching that old movie, The Coneheads. Remember that movie? You remember when he had the little thing in Beldar and he was shooting the little firework up? And they thought, oh, wow. Poof. Like a little bottle, right there, whatever. Also, <laughs> the big display. Do you know, if Jesus wanted to do those types of things, he could have done that. But see, the reason he healed people is because he loves people and he's compassionate upon human suffering. Amen. <laughs> so the one who hears and does not, he's like unto a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat violently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Notice, Two people heard, but notice what else happened. The storm came both times. Did you hear that? You're either in the middle of a storm, you've just come out of a storm, or there's a storm coming up. I wish I could say it wasn't that way, but this is a fallen world. Amen. So that's why I get so aggravated at some of these people say, oh, we're in a new world. We are in a new covenant world, but you're still physically in this fallen world, and you've got to deal with the things here. And if we're always talking about all symbolism and then all those different things, but we're not giving practical, applicable things, stuff like how to harness your emotions and not fall apart like a three and a half cent suitcase every time something don't go my way, something's wrong. How does this apply to my life? Amen. So, so once again, they both heard. The storm came both times. The only difference is one house stood, the other house did not. So what is the foundation? It's acting upon what you hear in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I said this before. It was one of the Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. One of them guys said, the greater part of learning is being reminded of things you already know. That's massive wisdom right there. Amen. Because you never know it. You just keep knowing it. Most of the notes I take for myself are for me. <laughs> Stuff I already know. But yet I say these the Lord, the, let me say this to you. The Lord will give you things, disciplines, just tailor-made for you that if you'll walk in that, you will stay put. You will. Do you know that Jesus had a prayer time? Ah, legalistic, man. Now you're getting under the law. See, we talk so much about position, we don't talk about receiving the position. And that's why I said, if you don't do these things, if you do these things, you'll never fall from grace. What are the things? I'm glad you asked. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Oh, it's good. This is good. This is good. And there's so many examples in the Word of God. There's so many examples. They say seven things. I call this the seven pillars of faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. The first four verses, he talks about your position, that you've obtained like precious faith in Christ. And it says, let's do it all. 2 Peter chapter 1. If we don't finish it, we'll finish it next week. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Let's just do verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those, that, those who have obtained, those who have obtained, not going to obtain. When we talk about receiving the word, we're talking about receiving the engrafted word that's already in your heart. We're not receiving something you don't have. You're receiving something you already have. Now watch this. 
to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Next verse. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge. The old King James says through the knowledge. In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace and peace that I already have are multiplied in my experience through the knowledge. Okay? The flip side of that is, there's always two sides to a coin, right? The flip side of that is, grace and peace are not multiplied unto me without the knowledge. Okay. Now, next verse. As His divine power has given to us. Woo! All things. All things. All things. He gave them to you. He's not going to give them to you. He's already given them to you. All things. Look at that. That pertain to life and godliness. Everything. Woo! Man, I'll tell you what, that's good. Through the knowledge, oh wow, of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Next verse. By which, by which, uh, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Great and precious promises. Great and precious promises. They've been given to you. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that through these, that through these what? The great and precious promises. You might be partaker of the divine nature. That's of God's very nature. Through these promises, you can partake of His divine nature. Man, that's all. That is so good. You know, people are miserable today. They are. We got more modern conveniences. We got, I mean, people in our... Kings would have killed to live like our poorest person lives just a few centuries ago. Kings and monarchs. We've got it made, baby. Uh, you don't understand. I'm depressed. Why? We can't afford the payments on our 15th flat screen TV. <laughs> Golly, it's persecution, brother. You're being persecuted for the gospel. <laughs> So, by which we have, have been given exceeding great and precious promises that through these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Watch this. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Do you know that there is a, the corruption is in this world through lust, but God gave you these promises and you've escaped. You, you have an opportunity to walk outside of the corruption that is in the world because of lust, not because it's God's will. Amen? Now, we're going to come back to verse 5. Look at verse 10. Never enough time. Verse 10, watch this. We were on this verse before. I want you to see it. From the old King James, please. There's a reason. Because I, uh, that's okay. I'll just leave that up there. Therefore, brethren, that's good too. Wherefore, the brethren, brethren, <laughs> give diligence <laughs> to make your calling and election sure. What, remember, we looked at this. If you do these things, you'll never fall. Now, we just read the position that God has given us in Christ. That he's given us these great and precious promises. He's given us all these things. And, if, and it says if we do these things, we'll never stumble or fall. The old King James says fall. Fall from what? Our position we have in Christ. So what are the seven things? Back to verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5, he says, now this is amazing. Because this, this bothered me for a long time, to be honest with you. I'll take it from the new King James if it's okay. And besides this, giving all diligence... Or, or, or for this very reason. What very reason? The reason of our position in Christ. Watch this. Giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. Add to your faith virtue. Can we have this out of the New American Standard? Sorry, Michael. <laughs> I'm working him out there. This is good. Because I want you to see it. I, I really do. Okay. Verse, verse 5, please. This is all good. All good. Watch this. Now for this very reason, also applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence. Now, he's given you seven things to add to your faith. One of them is moral excellence. And I was meditating on each one of these trying to think, why, why do you have to add that to your faith? Because moral excellence or virtue, as it says in the New King James and Old King James, has to do with your heart. For our rejoicing is this, 2 Peter, or Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, the testimony of our conscience. The test that in, with simplicity and godly sincerity, we, we, we were real with you. We shared the gospel with you. 
The testimony is our conscience. Our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. Paul said in Acts 20, verse 33, man, I, my heart's clean. I haven't coveted anybody's silver and gold. And then when he was before Felix, the, the Roman governor of Judea, in Acts chapter 24, he says, I have a conscience that's void of offense towards God and man. In other words, I'm real on the inside. What is character? It's what you are when no one else is looking. And he said, if this is one of the seven pillars, that if you add this to your faith, listen, if, if I'm fake, in other words, I'm living a double life. I'm not. That's my wife. But, 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 but if, I, if I'm fake and I'm, I'm sharing these things, that's what Paul talked about when he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, he said, he said I, want, I, I, I buffet my body. Not buffet my body. That's an American gospel. I buffet my body. Lest by any means when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway or disqualified. Disqualified from what? Does that mean Paul was going to hell? Absolutely not. You know what that meant? That meant I also don't partake of what I'm preaching to you. Because I'm not real behind the scenes. See, what you are, moral excellence. He said, add this to your faith. Be real. I'll say it again. Be real. Be who you are up here that you are in your life. That's why I say, I was, I was thinking last night, oh Lord, I just want to, I feel like I got to preach all the time. There's just so much to say and not enough time to say it. Amen. It's, it's, it's no longer just something I do, it's who I am. And it's who you can be too, whether you're in a pulpit or not, that's not the point. So he said, add this to so supply. First one, moral excellence, virtue. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. This is a big one. Notice it's not just knowledge. In other words, keep learning. I'll say it again. Keep learning. I cannot tell you. You know how many people that come in and they're all excited and they're this and that and they're hearing. And then guess what happens? The newness wears off. And then when the newness wears off, guess what? Do you know the newness wears off no matter where you're at in the entire world? Did you know that? No matter who you marry, no matter what, the newness wears off. And if you don't continually continue to grow in knowledge of the things of God, guess what? Then you have nothing. In fact, we'll come right back. We're doing good. Jump over to 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, we can do oh, New King James or Old King James, doesn't matter. Verse 15 through 18. I just want to show you this. And then we'll come right back here to 2 Peter 1.5. <clears throat> this is good. Okay. Okay, and consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, Paul, writing. Okay, next verse. This is Peter talking. As also in all his epistles or letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand. In other words, some of Paul's writings, this is what Peter's saying, they're hard to understand. I got some of them I want to pick on. Amen? I'm excited about picking on them whenever I'm allowed. Okay, they're hard to understand, which are untaught, which, which the untaught and unstable people twist, rest to their own destruction. In other words, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. In other words, they take the scriptures and they twist them and they say things with them that are not being said. This, listen, I, there's a lot of symbolism in scripture, but hear me and hear me clear. We need to be careful that we don't make symbolism out of stuff that the scripture isn't symbolic of. Does that make any sense? In other words, you can over-symbolize things. Well, this means this, and that means that. It better be verified in the Scripture. A lot of people do that, and it's dangerous. Because, see, you can make it say anything you want. Amen. Uh, I wanted to say something, but I won't. All right, next verse. Ye therefore beloved. Now, who's the beloved? Hello, beloved. Now, watch that. Since you know this beforehand, know what? That there's people that are going to twist or rest the scriptures. That there's people that are going to twist the scriptures. Since you know that, watch this, beforehand, beware. Beware. He's talking to believers. Lest you also, there it is again, look at this, fall. Remember he said you'll never fall if you add those seven things to your faith? Remember we talked about what falling is? Falling from grace. Christ becoming of no effect unto you, fallen from grace because you're justified by the law, Galatians 5, 4. And he says, if, since you know these things, beware, lest you fall from your own steadfastness. You know, as a believer, I can fall from my own steadfastness. This is not losing my salvation when I die and going to hell. This is not experiencing all that Christ says I can experience for the glory of God. 
God has called every one of us to be a world changer. Do you know that? We're not here to exist and die. We're not. People think that. That's insanity. That's why people are so frustrated. Because they're operating out of their God-given purpose. So they have this constant frustration going on. You therefore, beloved, since you know these things before, and beware lest you also fall from your own steadfast. You're being led away with the air of the wicked. In other words, going down the same path that people, I'm not saying it may not be the bars and all that stuff, but going down the same path of just existing for the moment and for their immediate pleasure and creature comforts rather than existing for the kingdom. That's it. That's it. God, hallelujah. Next verse. One more. But grow. But grow. What I wrote a quote on my Facebook, don't go through life, grow through life. Amen? But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What is the key to not falling from your own steadfastness? Growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if I don't grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, I could fall from my own steadfastness, which is trusting in Christ and not appropriating the grace of God. Having Christ become of no effect unto me. I want to be able to pray and see results. How about you? See, the, 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 the scary thing about the church world is we made it a religious social club. And we're all trying to do every, outdo each other with our Easter egg hunts and our, all those things. I'm not against an Easter egg hunt. I said that earlier. But I'm telling you, we make it about all that stuff. Give them Jesus. Jesus is more than enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, just give them Jesus. I'm not against the becoming all things to all men that you might save something. I'm not against any of that. But I'm telling you, if we make it about all that, and it's not about him, this is why people, yeah, then they used to serve, like, yeah, they're not really too excited about Jesus anymore. I'm more excited than I've ever been. It's been, it'll be 20, not December of 84, I don't know what year is this, 13, it'll be 29 years next December. And I'm more, I'm more excited now than ever. I'm more excited about the things of God. Do I have moments? Of course. You have things, what is a storm? I said it earlier, a storm is something to get your attention off the promise of God. That's why they come. And they're a fight. But I have to fight the good fight of faith. God says this. God says I'm blessed. God says this. So I'm fighting, I'm laying hold of the eternal life, which is knowing Him that no matter what it looks like, God will never leave me hang. That's good news. That's good news. Hallelujah. Back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, please. Michael, you're doing a rock and roll job. This is great. 2 Peter, I said... Uh, for this very reason, reason, giving all diligence, all haste, intensity, add to your faith, moral excellence or virtue, and to, and to virtue, knowledge. We just talked about knowledge. Next verse. This is a great one. To knowledge, self-control. Oh, <laughs> now you're going too far, Chris. I mean, come on. Self-control. I mean, I'm, after all, I'm under grace. I mean, come on. I'm under grace. I mean, self-control. Self-control is important. In fact, it's a fruit of the Spirit called temperance in the Old King James. Temperance in the Old King James here. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Control yourself. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a person that doesn't have any rule over his own self, his own spirit, is like a city that's broken down without walls. In other words, there's no protection. You know what Paul said uh, that they said all things are lawful, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 and 1 Corinthians 10, 23. But in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, he says all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the exousia or the authority of anything. I'm not going to let anything control me, not even coffee. I'm serious. I'm serious. When we let our appetites control us, I just got to watch this. What is God saying? I tell people this all the time. What is God saying? People say, well, what, what should I do about this? What should I do? Well, I don't know. What's God saying? <laughs> the Holy Spirit will tell you. You know. Amen. Do you know that, I, I, I'm going to keep this real simple, but do you know that when a husband and wife have intimacy, if they're in the childbearing years, that a lot of times the result of that intimacy is pregnancy? I know that's deep. <laughs> But you know, spiritually, when we're intimate as the bride of Christ with Him, you know the result is fruit? Are you hearing? The result is fruit. And sometimes, see, that's why self-control, being controlled, not letting myself tell me what I'm going to do. This is why He said, are you ready for this? 
Golly, it was so little time, 41 seconds. <laughs> We're going to have to go just a little longer. <laughs> I'll try to watch it, no guarantees. But, uh, you know, this is why the body says that we're to offer, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I'll give you the verses for the sake of time. We're to offer our bodies a living sacrifice. There you, go. There you, go. you know, the thing about a living sacrifice is it always wants to crawl off the altar and do its own thing. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul said, man, I buffet my body. And that's really strong in the Greek in 1 Corinthians 9. Really strong. I literally beat it. Not physically beat it, but I literally tell it what to do. Wow, this is good news. See, this is the power of grace. This is what grace enables you to do. This is who grace has made you. Amen? So it says, to knowledge adds self-control. And I believe that your body, your spirit, soul, and body, and I believe that your body's constantly uh, trying to, you know, the, the desires of the flesh many times are constantly trying to pull you away from the reality of who you are in the spirit. Do you know the more you sow to the Spirit, Galatians chapter 6, through, through correct understanding and acting upon the Word of God, do you know that eventually your spirit become, takes over your physical realm and you're more excited about the things of God than you are the things of this life? Exactly right. Amen. See, it's not about getting rid of it. Being a doer of the Word is not being a don't doer. <laughs> I want to cover that. I don't see I'm getting there. <laughs> Must not be God today. Being a doer of the Word of God is not don't do this. Right. Being a doer is, is adding these things to your faith, these character traits, these things that you have, these things that you are. And when you do that, you'll never fall from grace. Wow. So, okay, oh, this, ne this next one, patience or perseverance. We could camp on this one. Do you know that if you're believing God for something, if you don't add patience to it, I love what Rich said. He said something so good. He said, he said when you're believing God, throw away your watch. Not literally. You can keep your watch. Just don't look at it. Amen? Because it may take, some things may take a while. See, the Lord, can I tell you something that the Lord showed me? I was driving a bus this week and he showed me why I was driving the bus. He said, you're always building a belief system. I think I said it last week. I think I said it Thursday. Faith is a noun. Belief is action. You have faith. Acting on that faith is believing. And he said, you're always building a belief system. And I was driving that bus and I heard him say, and he gave me David. King David, you know why David could slay a giant named Goliath? Because he already had an experience of slaying a lion and a bear. Amen. Amen. Oh, I want to believe God for this big thing and thank God for miracles. But a lot of times it's the belief system that's in us. What you are, uh, uh, what you believe comes out when you're under pressure. Did you know that? When you're under pressure, that's what you really believe. And it saddens me because I see so many times, as long as things are good in my life, I'm, I'm moving from that. But I'm saying, rather than building my house, see, you can, if you're going to wait till the storm comes, okay, bring in a construction crew. It's not going to work real good. We build the house of our understanding when things are good. Then when the storm comes, guess what stands? Our house. Man, that's good news. Oh, I'll tell you, people need this. People need this. Because we've, pre we've preached the position side of grace that we haven't uh, talked about receiving grace and receiving the grace that we already have and we haven't understood our part in it. Amen? So knowledge, self-control. I'm going to try to quick finish this. Perseverance, endurance. The Bible says what sort of things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience, endurance, and comfort from the Scriptures might have hope, Romans 15, verse 4. Do you remember, you remember Joseph in Genesis? The Bible says in Psalm 105, verse 19, that until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Does that mean God was trying him? Are you with me yet? <laughs> no, but you have a promise and everything comes against that promise and it doesn't look like the promise is ever going to manifest. That's why you've got to add patience. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because if you don't add patience, you'll... Th we through faith and patience, Hebrews 6, 12, we inherit the promises. Faith and patience. Ooh. <laughs> we could go on and on about that. Perseverance, endurance. I'm trying to hurry. And godliness, which means being well devoted to God. There's seven pillars here. I'm going to hit them quick because I'm going to finish this. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. 
Once again, you add these things, you'll never fall. You'll never fail to receive. I don't have time to go on all that. And, to, and the brotherly kindness, love, charity, God's kind of love, which is powerful. The Bible says faith works by love. A revelation of God's love for me, which manifests in, in a revelation of my love for God and my love for my brethren. Okay, just keep moving right along. I'm, I know I'm not doing it justice, but I wanted to get the point out. For if, you, if these things are, in you, are yours and they abound... You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know you can have the knowledge of Jesus and be barren in that knowledge? You know what that means? That means there's never any result of what I know. See, I know a lot more than I actually manifest in my life. We all do. We're all that way. But, you know, the more we focus and put on there and the more we act upon what God shows us to act upon, guess what? Once again, what you hear you can't forget. What you see, you might remember. And what you do, you understand. Amen? You know, I, I'm going to tell myself, so if there's any police officers here or anything, please don't arrest me. But I drove a lot before I ever got my license. And I know there's several others in here that did the same. I'm not going to point you out. <laughs> but you know, that was a great advantage. Amen? Amen? To get in a car, whoa, I never drove before. And you know, somebody's behind you and doing about two mile an hour. You know, it's like, student driver. <laughs> Amen? But that helped. So if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Therefore, brethren, uh, uh, be even the more diligent to make your call in election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble, never fall. Next verse. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep that up there. Now let me say one quick thing here. I'm, I'm trying so hard to wrap this up and it's hard. Um, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 28 and 29, we're receiving a kingdom. Now do we have the kingdom? Absolutely. The kingdom. And let me say this about the kingdom. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Ready. We got one for two. Two people are ready. Anybody else? Ready. Ready. <laughs> You know, when Jesus taught the, what we call the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 and Luke chapter 11, you know, one of the things he said was, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Did you know that? You remember that? But you know what the kingdom looks like for you and I as new covenant believers? Oh, somebody hear this. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, it's peace and it's joy and it's in the Holy Ghost. If you take that verse, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, just leave the middle part out. The kingdom of God is in the Holy Ghost. When they were asking for the kingdom to come, they were asking for the Holy Ghost. Anybody hearing that? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I could do my baseball thing, but I won't. All right. So, so, so the, an entrance, if you add those seven things, shall be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Next verse. Just about done. I mean, we really are. For this reason, I will not be negligent, or I will not neglect to remind you always of these things. I got to remind you always of these things. I got to remind you always of these things. Why? Though you know and are established in the present truth. I got to constantly remind you, even though you know. Amen. Yeah, that's why I tell people all the time one of the greatest things we got going for us, my wife and I, is we are understanding more and more the value of constantly soaking in the Word. I'm telling you, this Bible study, that there's one on Tuesday, and there's one they're having every it is phenomenal. You, begin, you start understanding things. You start understanding that God will never violate His Word. And all of a sudden, it starts impacting your life. Now you know He'll never violate His Word to you because He can't because it's of covenant. You know, I was listening to somebody recently, and they were talking about, well, God wanted to do this, and God wanted to do that, which was true, good things. But, but I thought as he was talking, I was thinking, yeah, but it's the reason he did those things was because of covenant. See, when you understand covenant and that God will never violate his covenant, it'll change your life. I know I'm going long. I'm sorry. Not that long. Okay. Next verse. One more verse. Yes, I think it is right as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by reminding you. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 says, you stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. The greater part of learning is being reminded of things you already know. The more you see, the more you know, the more that's added. I mean, I go to verses, and like, like even doing the James 1, through 25, I could have camped on there, and I was there last week. There were so many things that I saw just this week, just this week that he was showing me. And he says, man, you add these things, Chris. Add these things. You know, 
all storms come with one goal, and that's to make you quit. Even if you still go through the motions, quitting is an attitude of the heart. Are you hearing me? See, that's why it's a fight. Back to our original verse, and we are closing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Let's look at it, please. 1 Timothy 6, 12. I want you to see it. I'm trying to get you to see more of these. Sometimes I blow them out there, and I want, to, I want you to see them. Even if we don't cover near what I think we should cover. God knows what he's doing. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Look at this. Boy, I'd love to do all these. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. Fight it. It's imperative. Lay hold. Lay hold on eternal life. Seize upon. Grab eternal life. What is eternal life? That they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. You've got to seize upon it. Fight it. We're not fighting the devil. The devil's defeated. We're fighting wrong mindsets. Okay? To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Are you a fighter? Amen. Are you a doer? Now I want to pray before we, we leave and I want to say, Father, in the name. In the name. What name? The name that every knee must bow to. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that you give us creative ways and, uh, uh, to, to act upon the word that we hear in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. I, I do, I, I know it's, it's, it's way before 12. There's, there's a big blizzard out there, but I, I, I want to read this to you. Is that okay? Can we just go a couple minutes longer? Because this needs to be on the CD and you need to hear it. Because this will give you another tangible to help you. And I apply this to myself. Everything I preach to you goes right to me. One finger at you and how many? One, two, three. And the thumb back at me. So four. <laughs> Watch this. This is Andrew Womack's thing. We shared it Thursday night, but I want it on the CD and I want you to hear this. He says, what, he's telling, he, I'm going to give two examples. I'll try to go fast so, so it'll be on the CD. Let me say this to you. First of all, believing, uh, thinking you believe and actually believing can be two different things. Believing is acting upon the faith that you possess. Those are things the Lord gave me. Now I want to give you two examples. When Jamie and I first started out in ministry, we were really struggling financially. Occasionally I'd work odd jobs to help make ends meet. One day I came home from a painting job feeling so sick I could hardly stand up. I just wanted to lie down on the couch and rest. Jamie was in the kitchen fixing my lunch. When she saw me on the couch, she said, she asked, what are you doing? I feel sick. I don't know if I can eat anything. But we... <laughs> this is amazing. But we had already been teaching other believers these same truths. You have to use your body to quit yielding to the devil. <clears throat> don't cooperate with him. Do the very things that you don't feel like doing. Resist the devil and fight against him with your physical actions. James 4, 7. I got wow written behind that. Jamie came right over and got me off the couch. She put her arm around my shoulder and started dragging me around the house saying, we need this money. You will go back to, to the, that job. You're healed. She made me get up and start acting healed. She just forced me to practice what I'd been preaching. Praise God. In 10 minutes, I was over it and felt well again. I went back to work and got paid that day. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I got another one I want to read to you. And hear me. This, don't do this if this isn't reality in your heart, but I'm saying do something. Do something. See, that sounds crazy to most of us. It's crazy that we don't go that way. We're the ones that crazy. They're sane. Amen. I've been waiting to drag Jen around the house for a long time. <laughs> I had to read it so she wouldn't forget. We have this thing where... When uh, we was watching, he was preaching on self-centeredness. Andrew was preaching on self-centeredness, the source of all grief. And I'll look at my wife when doing it. I go, is it too much conviction, honey? We can turn it off. <laughs> See, this is a challenging us. This is responding to grace. One more. Are you ready for one more? Does this bless you? It blesses me. This stuff blesses me. It doesn't condemn me. Yeah. Yeah. There was an old rock band called Twisted Sister that used to sing a song called, We're not gonna take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. It aggravates me. You know, hey, there's no condemnation, but I'm still believing that nobody in this church gets sick. Amen. And the other several weeks back, Jen was home with Gracie. But so what? We're not stopped fighting. That doesn't mean anything. God's still a healer because the word says it. God wants you well. And we're going to preach more and more on this because you're going to understand God wants you well just like he doesn't want you to sin. He doesn't want you sick. And he doesn't want you dying, going out all decrepit and beat up. He wants you going out with a shout. Amen. 
Hallelujah. One more. This one will really, I know. Watch this. Act on the word that night. The, the, the night before I was ordained into the ministry, I hurt my back opening our broken garage door. We were living in Siegelville, Texas at the time. As I bent over and started lifting the garage door up, it got caught and something just popped in my back. The pain that immediately shot through my body was so excruciating it knocked me to the ground. My one-year-old son had been watching me. I told him, go tell mommy. But he, he just sat there jabbering at me. Eventually, he wandered into the house and brought Jamie out. When she saw me lying there, I hurt so bad that, I, that all I could do was whisper. I hurt my back. Well, then get up, Jamie pulled me. Uh, man, she ain't very compassionate. <laughs> well, then get up, Jamie pulled me up, prayed over me and said, now you act on the word of God. Now you act on the word of God. Oh, this blesses me. Again, we needed, we needed me to go back, be able to work, so she uh, cut me no slack. <laughs> It was a long, long story, but I started doing things with my physical body. My shoulder blades were back so far, they were touching each other. The pain was excruciating, but I forced myself to do things I didn't feel like doing. Finally, over a day's period of time, I, I got to where I could do sit-ups and other things. Although my movement had returned, my shoulders were still pulled back. I went back, I went to bed that night, and when I woke up in the morning, my shoulders were still pulled back. I just kept fighting it all day long. Right before I went to my ordination service, I declared, I am going to act healed. I am going there, and I will be ordained. By the time I arrived at church, I was healed. Anybody hear that? Yeah. My actions played a major part in receiving and manifesting that healing. You can't lie in bed acting sick and at the same time release the supernatural power of God. That one's in the lake. That one's in the lake. That one's in the lake, baby. Look at this. Say it again. You can't lie in bed acting sick and at the same time release the supernatural power of God. You must learn how to use your physical body to resist the devil and cooperate, cooperate with the Lord. If you don't step out in faith and act on the word, you limit God. You know you can limit God. Psalm 78, 41, they limited the Holy One of Israel under the old covenant. How much more you and I under the new? Amen. Amen. I can't wait when she lays down to drag her around the house. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. But see, this is powerful. We got to act on the word, man. It's so simple, but yet so profound. We all think we believe this, but very few do. Thinking you believe and believing the word are two completely opposite different things. Mental assent or mental assenting to the word is not faith. You have faith. Believing is acting upon your faith. See, your faith can lie dormant. That's why he said, add these things to your faith. He didn't say, add these things so you'll have faith. He said, add them to what you already have. Act on the word. Man, that's good news. That's really good news. That is good news. And see, I, I thought, you know, these examples, oh, they're extreme. God, we're not of this world, people. We're not of this world and we've got to challenge ourselves to come up to all that God says we are in Christ. The Holy Spirit will empower us to do that and it comes by simply acting on what we believe. You know, we pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, I haven't been able to get it. I don't care if you go, blah, 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 blah. Do it. God will use it. It'll be like a dam and it'll just break. Just act on it. Are you hearing me? Just act on it. Well, okay, if he wants me to speak, I'll speak. We got this view that these big celestial hands will come out of the heavens like... <coughs> they're not, it's not going to happen that way. You talk. He'll give you the words. And I don't care if you get a hum, hum, hum. There's all kinds of languages in the world. Trust that God is using it. It's called faith. Faith is acting on what you believe. Faith, or excuse me, believing is acting on the faith you already have. Believing is a simple action. Amen. Amen. Anybody here need prayer for anything? Anybody not born again? You must be born again. Asking the Lord into your heart. I have a strong desire to lay hands on somebody. Anybody? Nobody? Okay. What do you need? What do we... Okay, where well, Ron hit you? No. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a... In the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of Jesus Christ in this body. I rebuke this pain in this side and I command it by the authority of the name of Jesus to go. Everyone said amen. amen. Anybody else? It doesn't have to be me. You've all got the same power that raised Christ from the dead. If you're born again, it's in you. Amen. You know you can lay hands on yourself. 
Do you know if, if you never practice these things, then you can't, you got to do it. Oh, God, I'm telling you what. Last week and this week, you need these CDs so bad. I do too. If I could just get past my voice. <laughs> my brother Steve said he was talking to somebody about uh, playing at, a, at his place, you know, a band about playing. And they said on the phone, somebody who knew me from years ago and said, man, you, that I, him and I sounded just like, <laughs> and he goes, because you want to play here or what? <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> Anybody? We're going to dismiss. Look at that. Before noon, you should be out before the blizzard. If anybody's stuck in a drift, well, can you believe the weather yesterday and today? I mean, it's amazing. It was short weather. I think how confused the bees must be. You know, they're flying, trying to find pollen. And all of a sudden, oh, back to the winter cluster. <laughs> Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Declare, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know, Abraham being a doer of the word of God was that he staggered not at the promise through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. He gave glory to God. You know, declaring is, is part of being a doer of the Word of God. Amen? Whatever He shows you. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.